NASA has released footage of the entry, descent, and landing sequence for the Perseverance rover. In this video, we're going to take a look at that footage, assess some of the images coming back from Yezero Crater, and listen to a wind gust on Mars. So let's talk about that. If you've been following along with the Perseverance rover, you have probably seen this footage already, but that doesn't mean we can't watch it again. And if you haven't seen it before, you're definitely in for a treat. In this case, NASA was able to recover a vast majority of the entry, descent, and landing sequence for the Perseverance rover, essentially going from a supersonic parachute all the way down to safely resting on the surface of Mars. So let's begin with the footage, starting with the supersonic parachute. Here, we can see the parachute being deployed at real time and slowed on the left. In this case, the entire parachute is deployed in 0.4 seconds, which is incredibly fast. Now, it turns out that this isn't the first time that we've seen this parachute being deployed. In fact, there have been multiple tests and videos of it being taken place in high altitude conditions on Earth. In this case, we're essentially mimicking the Martian environment to try and see if the parachute itself actually works. And by comparing one of these test examples to the Mars condition, we can actually have a direct comparison between our tests on the left and the deployment on Mars on the right. The next phase of this footage includes the removal of the heat shield. In this case, the rover needs to look down to determine where exactly it's going to land in Yezero Crater. So it removes the heat shield, and we can see that being dropped in the footage itself. The heat shield is slowly departing away from the aero shell, and remember that at this point, the rover is still attached to the supersonic parachute, so it's not necessarily going to impact the heat shield directly. I'm going to pause the video right here because at approximately the same point in time, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was overhead and able to take this image, showcasing the Perseverance rover and its aero shell underneath the supersonic parachute, which is pretty remarkable that the orbiter was able to capture this image. Going back to the video, the rover continues under the parachute for another minute or so. During this time frame, the Perseverance rover is taking images of Yezero Crater closer than ever before. And below is the terrain that it will spend the next years, if not decades, exploring. Now the next stage of this video is the power descent stage. And in this case, we can actually see a white flash near the top of the screen which is associated with the power descent being departed from or released from the aero shell. At this point in the entry, descent, and landing sequence, the rover is being controlled by retro rockets. And it's a little bit more apparent in the video as the terrain starts to shift underneath as it's trying to be navigated towards the direct landing location. Now in this case, we can actually watch various craters, cliff sides, and even sand dunes passing beneath the rover as it's trying to reach a flatter area. And as the altitude continues to decrease, the next stage of the mission begins, the sky crane maneuver. Now, this is actually composed of three different perspectives, but first we'll continue to look at the downward facing camera. Here, we can see that it's increasingly getting closer and closer to the surface of Mars until some of the dust clouds start to pick up and the rover itself actually enters the dust cloud. And this continues until the rover is safely on the surface of Mars. The next perspective is from the viewpoint of the sky crane looking down at the rover. The wheels of the Perseverance rover open up and it actually enters this dust cloud. Now for a few frames here, we can't even see the rover, which is pretty phenomenal that it was still able to safely land it on the surface of Mars. Now the next perspective is from the rover looking up at the sky crane. Here we see the vehicle flying above Mars. Now it appears to be levitating in the sky. This complex engineering showing the eight different thrusters, the fuel tanks, and the structure holding the entire vehicle together. It seems to be swaying back and forth, but this is actually the rover shaking underneath the sky crane. Now at the very end of this video, it's a little bit hard to see, but once the rover is detached from the sky crane, it then flies away and then impacts the surface of Mars roughly 700 meters away from the landing site. And quickly after landing on the surface of Mars, Perseverance was lucky enough to take this image. 
showcasing where the power descent stage has impacted the surface of Mars, causing a large dust cloud, which is pretty phenomenal. But let's watch that entire sequence again. But before we do it, let's take a look at the animation that JPL released to get a better understanding of what's going on from a third perspective. Again here, we can see the power descent stage getting closer and closer to the surface until the sky crane maneuver is released and the rover reaches the surface of Mars. Now again, if we watch the real footage, we can use that visual to understand what's going on. Sky crane maneuver has started about 20 meters off the surface. We're getting signals from MRO. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. Ready to now you might be wondering, again. especially in the footage, why does the power descent stage not appear to have any exhaust? And the answer to this is the fuel that it uses is called hydrazine. And when hydrazine reacts, it creates hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas, both of which are transparent. So those engines are still running, it's just that we can't see the exhaust. Now roughly a day later, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was overhead once again and able to take this image. Can you spot the Perseverance rover in this image? Maybe its parachute or where the descent stage hit the surface of Mars? Well, if you want to try and find them, you can go ahead and pause the video, because now I'm going to show you where exactly they are. Here you can see the parachute, where the heat shield hit the surface, and also the little Perseverance rover, getting ready to explore the red planet. Now I should mention that these videos have a much greater purpose than just our own entertainment. In fact, the team of engineers at JPL and scientists are going to be studying each frame of these videos. To learn more about the interaction of the Martian regolith with the sky crane and the rover itself, to try and improve upon the parachute and how exactly it deploys, and maybe improving the control aspects of the actual power descent stage. Even though the Perseverance rover successfully touched down on Mars, there are still ways to improve the design for future missions to the Red Planet. So it'll be fascinating to see what all they learn from these videos and how it can be improved for upcoming missions. If you want a more detailed overview of the entry, descent, and landing sequence for the Perseverance rover, I recommend you checking out this video, where I go into much more depth on each stage of the mission, how exactly it works, and the different components in the design, and why they were chosen. So if you want to learn more, check out that video. But here, we're going to take a look at some more images received from the Perseverance rover since it's been on Mars. Now roughly a day or so after reaching the surface, it was able to send back quite a few images and some of the first color images, as you see here. Additionally, using the navigational cameras, the team was able to construct this panorama, showcasing one of the first views of the surrounding terrain at Mars. After the first couple days, the mast of the rover was deployed, and by using it, it was able to take more images, including this one. Now you might be wondering why the rover has this strange color panel on it. And the reason is because this is able to help us calibrate the images. We don't exactly know the right combination of the files or the pictures that we get back, because we don't get a color image back, but a collection of black and white images. So by using this color calibration set, we're able to compare this to what we know the actual engineering design was. We know that one of those colors is exactly green or exactly blue, and by using this, we can correctly combine the images that we receive. But a big challenge is the fact that as the mission continues, dust will start to accumulate on those color panels, similar to the Curiosity rover. Originally, they were very clean and looked like this. However, after nine years on Mars, it starts to look like this. But after the mast was deployed, NASA released this image, the first 360 degree view of Yezero Crater. There are some incredible things in this picture. In the distance, you can see the rim of Yezero Crater. Closer up, we can see some of the main scientific sites where the team wants to explore, and some interesting rock formations. And additionally, the Perseverance rover was able to pick up a wind gust on its microphone shortly after landing on Mars. Now, this audio has been edited to remove some of the mechanical noises of the Perseverance rover. 
However, I want you to take a listen to hear what exactly it sounds like on Mars. Now I should mention is that you couldn't survive if you took your helmet off on Mars because the atmosphere is too thin. However, this is what it sounds like for the Perseverance rover. And hopefully we'll be able to get some more audio files back if the microphone is able to survive its first few weeks on Mars. As of recording this video, the Perseverance rover has spent 10 days on Mars and we have already seen some pretty phenomenal images of Yezero Crater. But unfortunately, the experiments have yet to begin, and the reason for this is because the team at JPL is currently updating the software of the rover. Now, when the rover was flying through interplanetary space, it was designed to function in space. But now that it's reached Mars, they need to update the software such that it can start to perform its experiments on the red planet. So what does this mean? This means that probably over the next coming week, all the software will be pretty much updated or for the most part, and they'll be able to perform test drives and maybe get some of the experiments online. However, it'll still take quite a bit of time before the Ingenuity helicopter starts to fly. So that's just something to keep in mind. However, it will be fascinating to stick along with the Perseverance rover and its journey across Mars. So with all that being said, I have a question for you. What is your favorite part of the entry, descent, and landing footage? Is it the deployment of the supersonic parachute or the incredible imagery of the sky crane lowering the rover into a dust cloud, safely landing on Mars? Let me know in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.